Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to program a solar charge controller. Now this video is episode number 18 in a series of videos where I teach you all the basic electrical skills and concepts that you'll need to tackle the next electrical project in your camper. Now over the last two weeks, I've taught you how to wire a charge controller, and even how to wire multiple charge controllers together and configure them so that they can communicate and synchronize their charging efforts. The next step in this process is going to be to program the charge controller to deliver a proper charge profile to the battery bank. So what's a charge profile? Well, there are many different battery chemistries on the market. Lead acid, AGM, and lithium iron phosphates are three of the most common ones seen in camper electrical systems, and each one wants to be charged just a little differently. One may want to be charged at 14.2 volts, where the next one wants to be charged at like 15.1 volts. and Maybe one battery needs a higher voltage charge when it's cold out and the next battery doesn't care what temperature it is. One battery may need to be charged slower the closer it is to full and the next battery may need to be charged at a constant rate. So in this video, since on most of my wiring diagrams at explorers.life, I have Battleborn batteries charged by Victron Smart Solar Charge Controllers, I'm going to be using that as the example, but afterwards I'm going to show you a way to get the proper information for your battery if you're using a different brand or chemistry, so stick around. First I'm going to make sure that my charge controllers are on, and then I'm going to open up my Victron Connect app. I'm going to select the charge controller that I want to configure from the list and wait for it to connect. Next I want to push the cog icon in the top right corner to access the settings menu. And then select battery. And since I am configuring a 12 volt battery bank, the battery voltage can stay on 12 volts. Now I'm configuring a 30 amp charge controller and I want to be able to use the full capacity of the charge controller, so I'm going to leave this at 30 amps. Now if the full charging capability of your charge controller is larger than the max charging rate of your battery bank, which is rare, but you'd want to turn that down to a more appropriate level. For example, a single 100 amp hour Battleborn battery can charge at a max amperage of 50 amps. Two 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries wired in parallel can charge at a max rate of 100 amps. Three 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries wired in parallel can charge at a max rate of 150 amps, so on and so forth. So you just want to make sure that you're not charging at a rate faster than the batteries can handle. So 30 amps for my single 100 amp hour Battleborn battery, which has a max charging rate of 50 amps, is good to go. Next up, the charger enabled setting will simply turn your charge controller on or off. And since I want my charge controller to be charging my batteries, I'm going to leave this on. Next up are battery presets. And since I have the exact charging parameters for this charge controller provided by the manufacturer, I'm going to select user defined from the list. And I am going to click the expert mode toggle to access a few more additional settings. Next up are the charging voltages. And these voltages have been provided to me by the manufacturer, so we should use those. Absorption should be 14.6 volts. Float should be 13.5 volts. And equalization should be 14.4 volts. Now, what are these voltages? All of these voltages are voltages at which the battery will be charged at the various stages of the charging cycle. Now, how did I even decide on those voltages? Well, we're going to use those voltages because that's what the manufacturer of the batteries has told us to use. I wish there was a sexier answer that made me sound smarter than I actually am, but when a manufacturer makes a recommendation, unless we have a really, really good reason to stray from it, we should follow it. Keep it simple, you know? The rebulk voltage offset can be left as default. The absorption duration should be left as default, which is adaptive. And the maximum absorption time should be set to a rate of 30 minutes per 100 amp hours of battery capacity your battery bank has. So in my case, I only have 100 amp hours of battery hooked up right now, and so I would set this to 30 minutes. If you had 200 amp hours, that'd be 60 minutes or one hour. 300 amp hours would be 90 minutes or an hour and a half, so on and so forth and the tail current can be left as default at two. The equalization current percentage can be left as default of 25, and automatic equalization is disabled. Although it doesn't really matter because it's disabled, the equalization stop mode can be left as default at fixed time, and equalization duration can also be left at four because it's not going to turn on because it's disabled. And we're not gonna press the start now button because these batteries don't need to be equalized. Now for temperature compensation, these batteries do not need temperature compensation, so this would need to be turned off. 
And these Battleborn batteries have low temperature charging protection built into their internal BMS, so we can leave this disabled. But if you wanted the charge controller to stop charging if the temperature drops below a certain temperature, you could do that here, given you have a temperature sensor somewhere in your system. And all of this information auto saves, so I can go ahead and press back. Now everything else can pretty much just stay at default. Load output can stay at the default setting of battery life or even turn it to always off. Uh, this is just for if you want the charge controller to control another device under certain conditions. A super cool feature, but definitely more advanced than what we're going to be covering in this video. The street light function can stay off as well. Now this is for if you were literally wanting to control a street light with this charge controller. Yes, there are actually Victron smart solar charge controllers and a lot of solar powered street lights. And Victron released a firmware update so that the street lights would turn on as the sun starts to set because the charge controller could tell when the sun was going down because the voltages from the panels would decrease. Super cool, and feel free to find a use for it if you liked, but this is going to be left in the off position for most camper installs. And the TX port function can also be left as default. This is similar to the load output where this can control another component if you need to, but again, that's a little too advanced for this particular video. And lastly is the VE Smart Networking function, which we covered in depth in last week's video, where we set up multiple charge controllers. Now this is where you would want to connect your smart solar charge controller to the other VE Smart Network devices in your system, like your shunt or other charge controllers in the system. Now I covered the setup of these systems last week, so if you want more info on that, I'll leave a link to it in the video description below, but that's definitely worth checking out if you have more than one VE Smart Networking capable device in your system. And now, everything's set up. And here's a bonus tip to save you some time if you have more than one charge controller in your system. If you want to save these settings and then upload them to another charge controller, you can click on the little save icon up here, type in a save name, which I would recommend that you call this the name of your battery, click done, and then press OK. And now you can back out to your main device menu and then click on your other charge controller, which is Array 2 in my case, click the cog icon, and then press the little download icon and you should see a .vcsf file with the charge profile name that I just saved. Then I'm going to click on that charging profile and click apply to apply the settings I saved from charge controller number one to charge controller number two. And then I can click into the battery settings menu to see that my settings have been applied. And now my charge controller has been successfully configured to charge my battery bank. Now, what if you aren't using Battleborn batteries? Which that's totally fine too, and the configuration process will pretty much be the same. But your battery manufacturer will likely have their own set of charging parameters that they recommend, and they usually have those charging parameters published on their website, or you can reach out to their customer service with the list of the available parameters that we can change on these charge controllers and ask them, hey, I have purchased some of your batteries and I am looking for some information on what the proper charging parameters are for your batteries. I'm charging with a Victron Smart Solar Charge Controller and here's a list of the charging parameter values that I can change. Would you please let me know what you recommend for these settings? Sincerely, an Explorus.life superfan, consider putting your name here. And to make this easy on you, I've made that little spiel available to copy and paste and a screenshot of the default Smart Solar settings so that you can save that and attach that to the email that you can send to the customer service of the batteries that you're using. Now, if the battery manufacturer is less than willing to help you fill in the blanks for these settings, you need to take a step back and internally reflect on why it's important to purchase components from companies that actually have good customer support. Now, if the battery manufacturer is less than willing to help fill in the blanks, you could potentially use the published parameters of a battery that has the same chemistry. And if you can't find that, Victron actually has some charging presets in the battery charging settings that you could investigate using. But I am personally never going to use a charging parameter without it coming directly from the battery manufacturer. Because if something goes wrong and I need to repair or replace under warranty, I need that info documented. Now at this point in the video series, we know pretty much everything there is to know about wiring a solar array. All the different wiring configurations, adding fuses, using solar disconnects, connecting the array and the battery to one or more charge controllers, and configuring charge controllers. And now that we know all of that, it's time to circle back around and learn what a charge controller actually does. 
The knowledge base that you've built up over the last dozen or so videos is going to make it easy for me to teach you precisely what the charge controller actually does in the system. And that is really going to tie this video series together, which is what I'm going to cover in the next video, so consider subscribing. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, it'd be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Hit the like button and leave any questions you've got or things you learned in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see more DIY camper building tutorials, and I will see you in the next video.